we're seeing you can vote for them right now in the chat with the hashtag M2KC. Are you vote for the Super Frogs, the strongest team in North America, with the hashtag SF? Yeah, and this is really interesting because, like I said, when they did go head to head with those Rogue Mage mirrors, M2KC ended up coming out ahead. But now, Super Frogs, they're adapting and they're showing that they can actually play these cleave setups as well. And in the past, Mew Mew Kitty Cats, they have really struggled with this Demon Hunter Death Knight composition. Yeah, the double melee composition is an archetype that the Super Frogs have now in their back pocket. But let's see how they perform in a tournament setting. This is really the first time we'll see Snuts and Channel playing Demon Hunter and Death Knight side by side. Fortunately, you've got Cubsy healing you, so even though they're playing on alternate classes, they can rely on him for solid defense and great shot calling to extend the match out to what will likely be a Mana Rift strategy from Snuts. So far, decent damage onto Jamili early on, but no cooldowns forced from Rub Cub. Cubsy's mana not looking like it's in the greatest of situations right now. Snuts getting stunned up as the team of M2KC go after him, bursting him down to half. How is he going to respond? So that's in position. Reverse magic to Polymorph on Cubsy. Good teamwork. Breaking up the crowd control chain. Staying in the fight. Now looking to get aggressive. Yeah, it could be very difficult for the Rogue Mage Paladin setup to get aggressive against this composition. What Super Frogs is bringing is a very durable setup. The Demon Hunter and the Death Knight, they provide a lot of self-healing that's difficult for the Rogue Mage to really penetrate through, at least in the early stages of the game before dampening really kicks in. Chanimal staying on target. Jamili doing a phenomenal job of just avoiding both Chanimal and Snuts throughout. Potentially they could win on mana. We see a swap to Cubsy as M2KC go for a surprise attack. The kill appears to have been denied, potentially, if there's multiple Gladiator's Maledicts to follow up. After this, maybe not. The anti-magic zone is now faded. The darkness may not be enough as Cubsy barely holds on. Massive cooldown overlap on the side of the Super Frogs, and if M2KC can make a swap like that again in the future, Cubsy could easily go down. Yeah, definitely. With no Bark Skin, Iron Bark, Trinket, Darkness, and overlapped with the Anti Magic Zone, things are not looking good here for the Super Frogs. As we've seen, the Restoration Druid is definitely Whoa. a vulnerable target. Hammer of Justice out of a kidney shot, and that's it. M2KC really exploiting Super Frogs, maybe not playing this composition at the highest level just yet, and putting in a way who you will be playing against potentially at land but you got to figure this out you want to have a comp like this here if they do drop down they can try something else against other teams that they've expressed their dominance against time and time again by all means super frogs splash around in that pond let's see what you can do with those little froggy legs thing to take into account is we've seen the demon hunter death knight match up particularly into frost assassination restoration druid not with the added damage of the Holy Paladin and the more instant cast reliable damage of the Fire Mage. So when you calculate that out with your cooldowns, we've often seen that the Death Knight will use anti-magic zone for Vendetta, like this situation, but it may not be enough when you calculate in the extra damage from the Holy Paladin and the more instant uh, guaranteed damage from the Fire Mage, which is why the Super Frogs went down in game number one, is because they were relying heavily on that anti-magic zone to be enough. Then when they realized it wasn't, they overreacted and committed too much afterwards. In this situation they've managed to make it through the initial attack with just the anti-magic zone however m2kc have changed up their targeting and they're pressuring snuts a lot more potentially trying to mix it up and catch cubsy off guard but in this position cubs elite cubsy easily denied it yeah snuts seems completely fine i mean if you look at what they traded out it was a lot snuts under fire right now as the gladiator safeguard does proc but he should be completely fine with that iron bark actually a full polymorph on cubsy nuts could be in some trouble one gladiator's mallet connects the second one Snuts just dancing around the field right now, trying to escape as much damage as possible. Gets caught into a double dragon's breath by Jamili. Good crowd control, but now Cubsy's free. And in that opening, like I said, they traded out quite a bit. The blind, the vanish, uh. the sap. Cubsy didn't trade out his trinket. He's really greeting it. They're trying to punish by putting a lot of pressure on Snuts, and he might actually fall. Snuts is retreating away, and this is a lot of damage from the Mew Mew Kitty Cats in game number two. They still got darkness, but they would like to exchange that for something harder hitting than just a crowd control chain. They'd like a crowd control chain plus some cooldown, something like a Vendetta or Combustion. And I do believe that Jamili is playing the cooldown reduction on his Combustion, so he's going to have another one before the anti-magic zone. That could be a big opening for Jamili. However, he's on the back foot. Rub Cub needs to recover and stabilize him so he can get aggressive as soon as possible. Then anti-magic zone 20 seconds away from being available. 
potentially having to go into the cauterized ice block as he dips very low, looking for a sneaky polymorph. Cub is able to shapeshift and avoid it. Jamili still being pressured. Rub Cub with not many throughput healing, increasing cooldowns at the moment. Combustion gets popped in desperation. Anti-Magic Shield denies any damage on Chanimal. Snuts is able to retreat away and avoid damage by using Imprison on Roasties. The Mana Lead is establishing itself for the Super Frogs. M2KC needs some huge hits and they need them soon. Yes, nuts under fire once again. Kidney shot into a cheap shot. Vanish sap on the Cubsy. Is he ever going to trinket? There's the full blind. What are they going to do? Anti magic zone trades out. Cubsy deciding to trinket. He does not want to fall far behind, but now a vulnerable target himself. Snuts, of course, holding onto his trinket in darkness. That's an answer for Super Frogs to respond to the next assault of M2KC. If we look at mana, Cubsy with a significant lead right now. I don't really see Rub Cub ever being able to sneak away for drinks in this matchup either. So Super Frogs, if they can hold on just a little bit longer, things are going to be looking good for them. Preemptive Iron Bark from Cubsy, expecting the Hammer of Justice, seeing Rub Cub charge across the field. Cubsy predicted the crowd control and denies any damage. Now all three members of the Mew Mew Kitty Cats are low on health. Fortunately for them, Avenging Wrath is now available. Rub Cub can pull the trigger on that as soon as possible, but gets stunned on it for a couple of seconds, although likely to not be under too much pressure, able to catch a big Holy Light stabilizing the team, although expending quite a bit of mana. They need to try and get something done during this period of time with Avenging Wrath. We see Jamili making a move, blinking in, cross crowd control, looks solid so far. It's not respecting that combustion vendetta, using his gladiator's medallion to break out of crowd control, reconvene with the team to reverse magic, a hammer of justice. Although now gladiator's maledicts being committed as well from M2KC. Snuts is just bobbing and weaving, avoiding roasties. Channel with good chains of ice to hold roasties at bay. They do survive that crowd control attempt, but now Smoke Bomb is an option for roasties to find a kill. As he moves forward, gets a bash onto Roasty. Snuts really tearing in right now. Rub Cub has to play catch up in this situation, but he's basically with no mana left. He's got a lot of defensive cooldowns he can rotate through, but with no mana, it's going to be difficult to keep his team alive through the consistent pressure of Channel and Snuts. Here's an attempt by M2KC on a Cubsy. He responds with the bark skin, but that's really all they're going to be able to pull through. This is a short window now, about a four or five second window where Cubsy will be off stun DR. They can stun him up with no bark skin and try to get some pressure rolling, but I think if Cubsy he responds appropriately is in bear form. I don't really see M2KC taking him down. I think Roasty should get in position to switch to Snuts in midfield and drop a smoke bomb. Try and 100 0 him. Reset the combustion. Uh oh, he got caught. They make the swap. They actually smoke bomb Cubsy, and I'm not the biggest fan. Look at that overlap. Over commit. What is that? Higher defensive arsenal for just a smoke bomb. That was a huge bait that Super Frogs just bit. That was insane. You saw Snuts drop Darkness, Channel with the Anti-Magic Zone, Cubsy Trinket out, and Iron Bark. I mean, sure, Smoke Bomb's scary, but that wasn't Combustion, that wasn't Vendetta, that wasn't anything, and that's the mistake we saw from Super Frogs in game number one that cost them, so they're going to have to figure out something. Cubsy cannot get caught out of form. Once again, you can see Rosie's slowly marching towards Cubsy. He wants to put him in a kidney shot so bad he can taste it, but Cubsy's going to be able to deny and stag for him, and that travel for him just line deciding him for as long as possible. You can tell that the Super Frogs don't have have a calculated plan of defense when facing this composition and potentially they're only using the knowledge they've seen from other teams in tournaments but they don't face the paladin variant calculating that extra damage and in this situation they overreacted immediately to not fall behind which means they're left open for a few minutes moving forward m2kc really need to take advantage of this time and get something going on their power play but cubsy once again sees rub cub moving in activates iron bark right before the stun lands allowing snuts to stabilize but maybe not enough roasties get stunned by channel channel taking full control of roasties to protect snuts from him does appear to be a full blind with no Glyre's medallion. This could be it. That uh -oh. huge cooldown overlap is likely to cost the Super Frogs. Game number two. Tons of damage. No follow up. Dragon's Breath whiffs from Jamili. Looking for the Palmer, but not able to find it. No crowd control chain there by M2KC. But in the meantime, Rub Cub has drank some mana back to actually have a lead there. Although they were looking to end the match at that moment. Definitely unfortunate for M2KC. Yeah, but Rub Cub does sneak away for a drink, and his mana is looking healthy. Another attempt here on Snuts. Full kidney shot. Do they have the damage? Jamili holding on to that combustion. Good pressure here. Full hammer justice on the Cubsy, but with no tr trinket. Actually, his trinket just rotated back up. So it, right now, Super Frog's feeling relatively safe. Anti-Magic Zone's back. 
Cubs, he's healthy. Channel's healthy. Snuts. Trinket coming up in 40 seconds. Super Frog's basically rotating through all their defensives once again. And now, N2KC, once again, they have to try to find an opening. Could they potentially win this on mana? I mean, I think the one other win condition is the 40% magic number where Death Knights end up going down. So if Rub Cub can maintain his mana at a healthy margin and they make that swap later on in the game, it could be an option. Once again, Cubs, he sees Rub Cub moving in, activates Iron Bark before the crowd control. If this did not happen, Snuts would likely not be alive right now. But Cubs, is positioning himself, which is why they locked in Ashamane's fall, it was more so for Cubsy to have 40 yard range from Rub Cub throughout the fight. He could see when swaps are coming out position and focus on mana rift. Although I do think the smaller maps would benefit them more and just keeping an eye out uh, and reacting more quickly would be it would have been a better option because right now they're actually getting stalled out by M2KC. So that's down at half. Has cooldowns to make the trade, but doesn't want to overcommit. Vendetta smoke bomb available. No openings as far as Gladiator's medallions, unfortunately, for that. Potentially, they can bait a trinket with a blind or a swap with Vendetta, then go for a blind play later on to kill Snuts. These could be options before the 40% dampening mark. Cubsy was trying to sip for a drink. Roasties is moving forward. Chains of Ice making it really difficult for him. Now Death Gripped as well. Rub Cub unable to find any mana. There's the swap. Are they going to go for the Vendetta bait? Doesn't look like that. They're hoping that Cubsy overreacts, but he is not. That 40 yard positioning, able to avoid Rub Cub's extra damage with that positioning and able to survive another swap. But maybe it's ride or die to kill Cubsy at this point. Let's see how he handles it. Definitely have to see Trinket and Bark Skin available, but Iron Bark is major defensive. That can keep him alive and empower his heals. Roasty once again gets a restealth. This is kind of disastrous for Rub Cub. He's in bear form though, gets Hammer of Justice. Rub Cub preemptively stunning him up. Roasty's trying to connect. Does he have the kidney shot? Not yet, it doesn't seem like. There it is, out of form. Cubsy, is he gonna fall? Do they have any defensives? Anti-Magic Zone, Darkness trade out once again. Big cooldown overlap, but maybe they need it. Super Frog's not necessarily in the best spot, but at the same time, Rub Cub's falling behind. Jamili under pressure. Rosie could potentially go down as well. Caught into the bash. Cubsy's trying to escape. Beautiful Frost Nova by Jamili, keeping him locked down in center field. If Rosie's can get there for a Shadow Step Kidney Shot, Cubsy could easily fall. Yeah, Rosie's needs to get there soon if they want to take this match. Rub Cub totally tapped on mana. Jamili limited on defense. Rub Cub caught in crowd control. Flyers medallion breaking him out of that. Maybe we see an aggressive blessing of protection and all in on Cubsy, but the time is ticking away. Cubsy now with Iron Bark available, can easily deny a kill on himself. Crowd controlling up Channel to bait Cubsy to dispel, not falling for the bait, staying in bear form, getting ready for the attack, realizing that he's really the only vulnerability. 11% away from that magic 40% number for Channel to become a target for the team of M2KC, but Rub Cub doesn't have mana, I don't believe, to make it another 10%. So at this point, their only option is kill Snuts in a smoke bomb or ride Cubsy into the ground. Riding Cubsy into the ground is going to be a bit riskier as Rosie is, is having a difficult time even connecting. Chains of Ice from Channel have been perfect. We see Rosie shot a step to Snuts to try and reconnect. Instead, now crowd controlling Cubsy to switch targets, but Snuts is able to avoid Rosties. They're ultimately getting caught. They have Smoke Bomb. Surprising to not see Roasties commit it here on this attack. Iron Bark now stalls out the damage. Another defensive cooldown out of the line. Up Jamili. Fortunately, Ice Block now available. Blind. They get Trinket from Cubsy. 30 seconds on Vendetta. We could see a swap to Cubsy and just completely annihilate him if they can stabilize. Jamili so low on health. Had to Ice Block amidst all of the chaos. Rub Cub has to heal with basically nothing left in the tank. Critical mistake on positioning. They stack up for a double stun. Jamili in desperation. Roasties pulls the trigger on the smoke bomb. Trying to get the kill, going for the all-in on 1% remaining health. Can they pull it off? Cubsy still crowd controlled. Jamili tries to find the polymorph, not able to find it. Cubsy jumps over, but it doesn't matter. They've got enough damage. Jamili could fall as well. Will he go down is the question. Channel just gunning after him. J Jamili will fall, cross kill. Rub Cub's got zero mana left. Cubsy's got more than enough to keep this going. A bit unfortunate for M2KC in their final push. Getting the kill on Snuts first, but ultimately just too much pressure in favor of the Super Frogs. Roasties in desperation, tries to set up a swap on the Cubsy to take him out. Channel grips Roasties away. Barkskin should be enough. Unless Rub Cub can help Roasty stay on target, Cubsy's going to escape to safety. And in this position, when you've got an unholy death knight with the ghoul chasing you, Rub Cub will never find opportunities to drink and regenerate mana. Whereas Cubsy right now is just casually chilling in cat form. 
able to regenerate, I would imagine, at least s some semblance of mana and should be securing the match off that. Yeah, if you were in a 2v2 match, what would you rather be? A Holy Paladin Assassination Rogue or an Unholy Death Knight Restoration Druid? My money is on the Unholy Death Knight Restoration Druid. I think this is going to be a nightmare situation for M2KC, but with Rub Coven Rosies, they might be able to pull it off. Kitty Shot onto Channel. Cubsy in a good position, very far away, and like we kind of talked about, Roasties, he wants to be on Cubsy, but it's just so difficult. Chanimal with that very powerful Chains of Ice and Death Grip just makes it such a nightmare. You can see Chanimal just having his way with Rub Cub, gripping him back, not allowing him to get crowd control on Cubsy. Cubsy sat down for a little bit of a drink. Rub Cub completely tapped on Nana, and like you said, Sid, with that ghoul chasing him down with the fire chains, it's almost impossible for him to drop combat and sit down for drinks. Cubsy once again trying to get another sip of water, regenerate some mana. Stampeding continues to ramp, and Rub Cub really he needs another minute and 18 seconds. I mean, even if he makes it to that point, he doesn't have mana to heal with his Avenging Wrath. Good crowd control on Cubsy. Channel down at half health. They get Cubsy's trinket on blind. So to me, their only option at this point is to switch with Vendetta, and that's 30 seconds away. Channel's got both members at 50% health, and they need 30 more seconds. Divine Shield will buy them some. He did get the Divine Shield on the Glyre's Maledict. At least that threat will be out of the way. Roasty stalls the fight. Channel with bad pet control here. The ghoul switched targets. Rub Cub tries to sit down for a drink. Not able to find any mana, and Roasties is just inevitably getting crushed Vanished. under the damage of Channel with both members so low on health and absolutely no mana left. Mew Mew Kitty Cats can't believe that they're going to ultimately lose this game, having found the kill on Snuts first, but Channel's defense is unbreakable. Icebound 4-2 to two to just na finally nail this game out. Super Frogs tie it up, but it can't be this close. And we keep saying, yeah, if the meta swings in his favor, he's going to be fantastic. He says... The heck with that, man. I, I'm going to adapt to the meta. If the meta is in my favor, sure, I'll destroy it, but I'll destroy anything that comes my way. Super Frogs, 540 points, trying to bank even more. All right, I'm curious why we see Super Frogs going for the large maps and then M2KC going for the small maps. To me, it says that M2KC want to play aggressive and constantly go after the healer. And by picking the larger maps, Cubsy can then more easily deal with that, potentially. However, on the small maps, it's much easier for Snuts to get to his target and Mana Rift more frequently. So let's see if Snuts can capitalize on that advantage that he will have in this match, whereas Cubsy will have a lot more pressure thrown onto him throughout this to stay alive in the fight. Cannot afford to be caught out of form. Rossi's going for Vendetta without a stun, just trying to pressure, maybe bait something a little early on, but they don't find anything with it. Rossi's now goes for the kidney shot, catches Cubsy out of form. Jamil Double Frost Nova. Good crowd control by Jamillion Roasties. Excellent teamwork. Cubsy dips very low on health. How are they going to commit to the situation? Darkness now used as well. Will it be enough for Cubsy to stay alive? We've seen this situation in the past, and it may not be the case. M2KC take game number three going face. Oof. Now making his debut here on Pulverone Arena. Well, he, he's got three or four classes that we've seen look really strong on the tournament level. Jamili, obviously somebody who can multi-class. You, you look at Rub Cub, and it, it really just is one of those things where how many specs can Rub Cub play? Bit of a yikes moment for Rub Cub getting caught in hibernate in that Ghost Wolf. Definitely wants to be shapeshifting and avoiding that. Good punish by Cubsy early on. They managed to bank Glyre's medallion from Rub Cub. Could be an opening to switch to him now moving forward. Chanimal in the meantime is ramping up his infernals, but being pressured quite heavily in that double dispel could be throwing Cubsy for a loop. Chanimal now fully ramped, looking for big chaos bolts. One chaos bolt gets dispersed instantly by Jamili, respecting that ramp that Chanimal has been building for some time. I think that's more than a fair exchange. However, was overlapped with the Earthen Wall Totem, the defense of M2KC. I would say is being managed decently well, but could be slightly better. And because of that, we could see the Super Frogs capitalize for a punish. Smoke bomb opportunity maybe onto Rub Cub moving forward. I'm more curious to see how the mana situation plays out here on Tolveron Arena. If Rub Cub can maintain his mana later into the fight, Ooh, double mortal coil, good, good setup. And this is where the mismanagement of cooldowns could end up costing M2KC the match as Glyre's Maledict fly in. Jamili gets bashed in the smoke bomb and likely to go down. Spearling Totem one second away from connecting and even the slightest error when facing a team. Out and of this is a true battle of titans. Th this is perfect. Th this we're happy about. Just forget everything else that's happened in the series because right now the Mew Mew Kitty Cats they are trying to secure a land spot against the number one team in North America and it's the best against the best. They are both on their best compositions. This game going to decide the whole darn thing.
Right, M2KC going straight for Chanimal here in game number five. Potential qualification on the line. Cubs are getting sapped at the end of the crowd control chain. Chanimal, will he be able to survive with just the unending resolve on such low health? Rosis is maybe setting up to swap to Cubsy in cat form. This could be devastating if they are able to nail the kidney shot. They go for the blind. They silence the trinket. Will Chanimal be able to hold on? The crowd control chain was endless. They managed to stay alive, though, without overcommitting their cooldowns. Rossi's, however, with Vendetta, might be able to make a power play. We have to see if Rub Cub can initiate crowd control. M2KC could win momentarily if they don't respond appropriately. Hammer of Justice secured. Vendetta gets popped, and M2KC are looking to advance in the upper finals. Crowd control uh -oh. secured. No way for Chanimal to stay alive, and M2KC have done it. They're going to stay in that upper final, and this is, if you're the move in the lower bracket now, feed versus the fake zebras we're all tied up one and one who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for azeroth